So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Alexander, and today we are taking a look at Thunder on the Mississippi, Grant's Vicksburg campaign, April through July 1863, from Multi-Man Publishing. So this is the most recent um, volume, uh, volume uh, 14, I believe that's what that says, it's actually really hard to read, uh, of the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War. Um, this is a series that was originally started by Avalon Hill back in the day, and uh, it is a series that I picked up probably about this time last year, and have come to love, and it's really very quickly skyrocketed to be one of my favorite war game series. Um, it is both great for solo play, but also excellent for two-player play. And, uh, you know, it's really helped to garner my interest in the American Civil War, which is previously a theme and or topic of history that I had to struggle with connecting with. And so we just, we play some games. It was like, cool, I played a game. That was fun. Some of it was fun, some was not, but really, really love this system. So uh, this is the most recent iteration. It is uh, one of the kind of the smaller uh, packages. If you think about Onto Richmond 2 that came in a massive kind of three inch box, it was twice the size of this, had uh, an unconscionable amount of stuff in it. This is a much, <laughs> a much less expensive package. It's still not cheap, um, but it's all made here in the USA by MMP. So you, you, you're paying up front for, uh, you know, th that luxury basically. Um, but also that's not to downplay how much content you do get in the box. So let's kind of dive on in and see what we get with it. So really quickly, we're gonna have a look at the back of the box here. Uh, so there's a, you get a big rule book, you get the big series rules as well, a couple map sheets, and uh, there's a couple of sheets of counters in this one. Um, but they have this very, I don't wanna say stand, this very uniform look across the series. Uh, this one, um, less than the others, because it's on the Mississippi, probably doesn't connect as much, but a lot of the other ones do like the, you a lot of the maps join up together this one's uh, obviously a little bit <laughs> further out so let's crack it open here so you get the very classic uh, red and white mmp die that come in like every single one of their games uh, we will take a look at the maps here in just a second but we got two of those so the first thing we're going to come across is this um, charts and tables bifold from 1.6 version of the rules um, Almost all of these are kind of backwards compatible with each other and the components. So if you have some of the older versions and you're coming across the 1.6, you can use these rules with most of your other games, no big deal. Uh, but it's got your combat results table on it. Uh, summary of those artillery modifiers, ratios, chart ratios, give you a modifier in this game. Now we have in here our sequence of play for the advanced game, and I'm going to tell you right now, the advanced game is where it's at in this one. Um, what constitutes a flanking attack and how you adjudicate those. The retreat rules, um, which are really helpful because they are quite nuanced. Um, you really want to pay attention to where you can retreat, and you want to get people into a position where they cannot, because then they're going to take way more losses. Um, a couple of random die, events, dies, and things like that. Uh, strategic events table as well. And then we have our kind of movement summary of what movement looks like. Um, entry costs for occupied hexes, which is very stringent in this game. And then command radius and extended march tables, which if you're doing extended marches, that's part of the joy of the game. So we have the standard basic game rules, and this is 1.6 here. Let me check real quick. I normally don't do this in videos, but I am going to check because I can't remember if this had 1.6 or not. 1.5. So in Onto Richmond 2, it was 1.5 version of the rules. So in, this is the most recent iteration since then, and this has 1.6. So this is the most up-to-date set of rules. So this is the standard rules, and then we have the kind of campaign stuff, which we'll get into. So the standard version of the rules, um, it is 20 odd pages of rules, and I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a very dense rule book, and this is one of the smallest typefaces in wargaming of all time. And I think the, those blue rules we just uh, honed in on, the blue stuff is new, 
Uh, and they have, when using GCACW standard rules in Stonewall's last battle, the only crossing lane walled as a dam that should be used as should be treated as a dam and not afford a Scots dam. So they give you very specific um, information about very specific uh, ways to kind of backdate this set of rules into stuff. And Stonewall's Last Battle is not even a game that MMP does. I actually have that. This is a very distracted video. Stonewall's Last Battle is this old Avalon Hill one. Uh, that you can't, the MMP hasn't redone, is my understanding of it, uh, from the Chancellorsville campaign. Here's my nice little cube for me tray in there. This is what the game looks like, all organized. Perfect. But uh, they, go, they go as far back in backdating those rules to, when was this released? 1996. That's dedication. And, and that's part of the reason I love this series, is the fan base for it, the support for it, and the love and the... Um, research and the detail and the efforts that go into it really, really show uh, in the game and its support system. So, anyway, that's what kind of the blue sections of the rules are, like the new stuff. So this is all kind of the standard rules, how to read counters, how to move, how to fight. Then we have the uh, standard rule, like the, the game-specific rules, and this is an absolute chonky boy. This is, you know, 59, 60 pages. However, before that turns you off, um, it has the, the rules for the basic game, and the basic game effectively is like one day pitched battles, uh, or, or really small engagements where you're just kind of moving and doing some fighting. That's cute. That's not where GCACW shines though, in my opinion. You can do those for like small tournaments or to kind of maybe get to learn some of the real basics of it, but I, you would be better suited and better served by finding someone who knows this system, and there's a lot of people that do, and just sitting down at a campaign and just getting into it, because you're gonna get the meat of what the campaign offers you, and it is uh, mouth-watering, honestly. So, all the basic rules, and it'll start jumping into these basic scenarios. And the basic scenarios are like, one turn, and you only use one map, and it's a couple counters, and that's kind of what you're going with. Uh, and there's a bunch of scenarios. Some of them get a little bit bigger with just more guys, but it's still only like one day or two days. This one's four turns. Real short stuff. But what you'll notice if we look at the turn track is that the campaign can go up to 70 days, 70 turns. And that's <laughs> that sounds crazy. That sounds like a lot. This, this... The 70 days is where you're going to see the incredible arc of the campaign. This is the campaign and everything leading up to the Vicksburg, and then you progress and you do the siege of Vicksburg and stuff. Like, that's it, there's so much more than just, hey, I fought a pitched battle between a couple trees in a valley, you know? Uh, so that, that's all this basic stuff. And again, there's a lot of that. And if you want to do this, totally valid way to play it, but I promise you that if you can get it together and do the advanced game rules, you get so much more out of it. And I need to take my own advice for something like Great Battles of History, because I played the simple GBOH, and probably that I'm going to have a similar experience, but <laughs> for this series, I learned the advanced game rules right off the bat, and I, I loved it immediately, it it head over heels. So you get uh, some explanations of what we had found uh, on the played when it comes to uh, some of the uh, events, both strategic and random. And then you get the, basically all the supply rules are in the advanced game. Uh, how to substitute units, uh, if you need to switch guys out, um, and if you need to break off subunits to have very small pickets and raids and things like that. You can do all that stuff. Railroad movement, and there's Confederate railroad movement, there's Union naval operations. Again, a lot of this stuff is extremely specific. How to perform a water evacuation. Guess how many times you're gonna do that? Once. You're gonna do that once in a game. Um, is this them dig? Yeah, D just, there's so much stuff that goes into a lot of these things. Um, 
all your reinforcement rules, reorganization rules, siege operations. And this, again, seems very daunting. There is a lot of stuff. Johnston's army of, like, <laughs> Sherman's army of maneuver. You have all of these specific rules because they had the different armies uh, maneuvering around. And they have their own um, specific rules that govern what they can do so that you can't do anything stupid, basically. is a lot of what that is. And that you're impeded by the same things that those armies or sub-armies were impeded by. Vicksburg surrender rules. Then we... Then and only then do we start getting into the advanced game scenarios. Um, so this one here, the advanced game scenario 12, players, plays, counts, da, 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 da. scenario 12 normally lasts 70 turns. This is where we're playing. So this is all of our special counters, all of our setup, all of our pre-game stuff. And then we'll have all of our special rules and then where all of our victory points come with come from. Um, a lot of these kind of victory points, if they're geographical, I will mark them on the map. Um, losses in manpower are always victory conditions as well, so you want to take care of that. And then we have all of our setup. Uh, this is a not insignificant amount of things to set up. Oh, they only have just the one advanced campaign. Perfect. That works for us. Um, so, for example, in like... Uh, uh, what's the what's the other called? In Stonewall Jackson's Way 2, I think there's like three campaigns because I think you have um, a couple different ways that you can play that one this one looks like we've got just the one big long campaign and it's 70 turns the rest of the book here the, these last kind of six or seven pages is history um, what to do what not to do a gazetteer of the map which is cute and designer notes so that is a lot to digest but I promise you it is all well worth it so uh, we have a nice little note from MMP telling us that we purchased it and what we purchased. That's great. Uh, we'll look at the counters here in a second. We have another copy of the Thunder on the Mississippi charts. Again, these are game specific, like specifically really with the events and stuff like that. Most of the rest of the stuff is uh, standard. We have our GCACW standard terrain effects chart. So we're just going to hand this around. This tells us what we can and can't do and what those things do and don't offer us. And the rain MP costs are always prohibitive, basically. Um, how to ford rivers, dams, things like that. Uh, we do have some force array charts just to help reduce stacks, basically. So you're going to put your guys on here and you'll have the force one marker on the board moving around with the leaders. Um, the Confederacy, the CSA, should have one of those as well. They do. It's right here. These are, these are helpful. Uh, I do like to use those. But we have two and a half counter sheets, as that's the end of back empty box. So, first we'll start with a little uh, half sheet of counters. Very, very standard stuff. So we've got our forts and we've got our breastworks. And on the back of those, uh, we've got our forts. Okay, those are the same on both sides. 63, 63. The breastworks have the build forts. Because you are going to build the breastworks, then you're going to turn them over to fort being built, and then the forts will get built. Um, we have some out-of-supply markers going on, fort-destroyed markers, uh, artillery points that we'll have in addition to what we might have inherently, and then some bridge destruction markers as well, destroyed ferries, things like that. Very standard. Uh, let's look at this one real quick, because this is nice and easy as well. So these are our um, strength points. They go from 1 all the way up to 14 for the, for the Federals. And on the back... This is the disorganized version of them. And so we have our 14, but when they're disorganized, they're actually a 10. So disorganized is a state of being that reduces your um, manpower, um, but that's something that can be recovered and you have the same manpower. Disorganization has an effect on your manpower, but it's not the same as taking casualties. If you look here, look at all these strength points, and they go really high. And then we're going to look at the CSA over here. They have far fewer strength points, and they go up to a whopping six. So, uh, <laughs> one of the beauties of this game is that there are um, some like hidden reconnaissance rules, and there's some even um, like there's some separate secret ones where there's even more punitive rules to those where reconnaissance and scouting and there's like a bluffing element where you play double blind that is incredible um, if you want to do that 
it, it makes scouting really, really, really important because you never quite know what you're up against. And then we have fatigue markers. Fatigue is a, a keystone or like a, uh, a hallmark of this series. As you take actions in your turn, you will gain fatigue. Fatigue will act as a negative modifier for recovery and for combats and things like that. Um, don't, don't get yourself to fatigue for and disorganized. You're basically not effective at that point. So let's look at the actual forces themselves. And what's interesting is you'll note here is if we actually look at the forces, the CSA have more forces. Okay, they've got more forces and leaders. The Federals only have these forces and leaders. So right off the bat, you'll be able to see we will have fewer guys, but they will be much stronger. These will have more guys, but they will be much, much weaker, basically. So you'll be combining guys and things like that or spreading around trying to dodge and weave and feint. Or you'll just all retreat to Vicksburg and everyone's going to surrender. That works too. So these are the forces. We've got the leaders. They have their nice um, historical photographs on them. And they're all color-coded according to their commands, which we really like. So uh, let's uh, well, these are army uh, commanders over here. So we've got Walker, and he's the little white one. And so this is, these have the W on the side for Walker. That's him right here. We've got Breckenridge in red, BRE. And then we've got Breckenridge is going to command uh, these guys down here. He says off camera. <laughs> um, same thing over here for the Federals. We've got Grant, Sherman, Steele, Park, McLernand, Washburn, and McPherson. And all of their color-coded respective units. We have these um, subunits, which are things we can break off with a couple of strength points. And they're just going to kind of sit and hold areas. Or we've got these CAV units. Uh, this one, we don't have any CAV leaders do we that's interesting uh so some some battles and campaigns have like cav commanders and that th those are really fun to play around with we can do big raids and things like that and everything else here are um admin markers turn markers manpower markers those force markers we talked about supply depots wagon trains uh, and lots of off-map holding stuff as well uh, if you're playing with the flanks refuse type stuff you can add those in leader activations versus um, CSA ones, they're all on the back here as well. Demoralize, don't do that, that's really bad. <laughs> uh, but that's all of the units. This is the units, that if you have every unit on the map, it's, that, that's half a sheet of counters of units. So don't be daunted necessarily. You have these two huge maps out, and we'll look at the maps right now, and you will not have that many guys on there. So here's our first map. And so this is the Vicksburg map, right? So we're actually going to turn it sideways just so we can get it in the frame, basically. So this is our 70 turn turn track over here, our Vicksburg siege track, and our victory point slash manpower loss track down here. And then we have our random events table recreated on here as well. You can see there's this large kind of grayscale um, out of play off map stuff. But uh, we've got the Mississippi. The father of waters, I believe they call it. Uh, Warrington, we got Vicksburg over here, and we got the Yazoo River that goes up north as well. And then the other map is going to go and stick on the side of it. So that's map, the west map. And so we have the east map, let me follow the sound, which goes all the way over to Jackson. Again, pretty large out of play area. Uh, and these are going to line up. I'm going to kind of butcher that right here, but there you go. It gets kind of like this. <laughs> yeah, that works. So this is Jackson, Mississippi, right over here. And you'll see this is Hines County. Uh, and there are, there are county borders, which are these red dotted lines. And they'll have a county capital. The county seats are often worth victory points in a lot of these games. Although in this one, I'm not sure because I haven't looked over the victory conditions of them. Uh, we've got Yazoo County, Warren County, Claiborne County down here, uh, Copia County, and then Madison over there as well, up, up top in the top right-hand corner. Oh, that might be off screen, but if we, I'm going to fold this up so we can, uh, I can hold it up to the camera a little bit better. But I really, really love playing on these maps because they have all of this detail in them that was fully unnecessary. So um, we have like this little tiny hamlet or village called Adams. And just the printing on the map has like, this is a little orchard and there's like a hill. 
and you know, there's this a slightly different shaped version of this orchard. Like they just put so much effort into the map. And you can see like, look, there's like some, oh here, there's some plowed fields. And here's this much smaller orchard in Ratliff. Like th this is a beautiful map to play on major rivers and then little creeks and things like that. I, I love the detail of this. And when they have that gazetteer in the back of the, the rule book, it's to go over like, okay, Chapel Hill Church, did something happen there? All the stuff where things actually happened and went on, those are called out and there's so much history available in these. And I think what's what I love about this game is you move at this huge operational scale, but it includes such tiny and specific and um, really human detail at this level and, and it accounts for that. And I really, really, really like that uh, as part of this series. But um, I'm extremely excited to play this. If you give me a new GCACW, I'm like fully on board at this point. I will play every single one of these uh, that they keep releasing. Uh, and I'm like hunting down some of the old ones that I don't have. Because I think I have, I think I have all of the MMP ones bar two. I think that's true. Uh, and then a lot of the old Avalon Hill ones have been kind of redone and put into things. So Onto Richmond 2 includes the old Onto Richmond and, and a couple of other bits and pieces. The, old, the, the uh, new Roads to Gettysburg 2 includes a bunch of like the old Avalon Hill ones kind of put into one and then some additional content too. But uh, Thunder on the Mississippi, um, I highly recommend this, even having not played it because the series is so good. I'm very excited to play this. We will play this by the end of the year. Um, and uh, I, I just can't wait to experience more of GCACW by diving into this box, especially having learned a lot about Vicksburg this year through my own kind of personal reading. So appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.